Hello, everyone. We are Some Irritating Male Podcast. And if you are here with us tonight, uh, my name is Jacob, and I just moved. So that's why there are boxes in the back. I'm here with my wonderful co-hosts, Paxton and Good to be Josh. Good to be here. Uh, Hello. And what's new, what's new in your guys' life? What changed recently? Well, well that's I, great. I, so <laughs> this episode... <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Paxton, you first. Do I, do I actually get to go ahead? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. I, I switched from boxers to briefs, and I'm never looking back. That's that's big news. That is okay. big news. Josh? Cool. Um, I'm recovering from follow? a cold, so I've gotten healthier. The end. That's well, I guess that's that's good. Yeah. That's good news. Um too. we're glad you are back, Josh. Uh today we are going to be doing something interesting. I am leaving Paxton and Josh in the dark. I am having them draft people from movies and they can't choose any superheroes. So they're drafting characters from film, from any film, uh, and they will each have, how this is going to work is they will each have three minutes and they will take turns. Um, I'm going to have them, well, we'll decide who goes first here in a second, but you'll have three minutes to select a character. When you are selecting the character, you can ask me one yes or no question per character that you are selecting. Now, neither of these guys know what they are selecting these characters for. Uh, they each will get five. They'll get a couple minutes, and I will only reveal to them what we are doing after that. So if you are watching this, you may know a little bit more about what's going on because we'll have a title, but Josh and Paxton are completely in the dark right now. So with that said, um, are there any questions that I cannot answer right now? Because I'm probably not going to answer any, but if you guys have anything else that you want to talk about or yeah, you clear um it up. How do we determine who gets to go first? I feel like that's the most important yep. question. Um, the only way uh, to determine it is we're going to have you guys play rock, paper, scissors. Nice. Oh, a gentleman. A gentleman's game. A gentleman's game. game. A gentleman's game. Right. Mm. Are we ready? Yeah. Right now? Um, yeah. Ready? I, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let's do Let's do best of three. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm usually only win the first round. Okay. Like, I, like I, I will... Bar. All right. So it's rock paper scissors. I will, help, then com shoot, I will right? help commentate for anybody who's just listening, uh, and ready. And I'll say go, and then I'll say rock paper scissors shoot. How about that? Sounds good. Okay. All right. Ready. Go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right. Both rock. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, Josh wins oh, round one. Boy. Let's go again. Ready. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start going faster. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. There Paxton wins round two. This is for all the marbles. Is it? And ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And Let's Paxton go! clutches it in the end, good just like you. he clutched just it like, in our softball game. Just like uh, I predicted. I'm good at closing it. Just like <laughs> I predicted. <laughs> all right, Pax, we're putting you on the clock right away. You have, you, three, middle, Josh. you have three minutes. Um... You get to ask the question, and okay. as soon as you ask a question, I will start the timer. Okay, okay, I got my question. Okay. Do I should I be um should I be like uh should I hold on? Do I want <laughs> is like fighting abilities a thing that I should be concerned about? Goodness, I don't know why that took me so long to phrase that. Yes, I should be worried about the. Oh goodness, you hear that, Josh? Yeah, I heard that. All right. There's a lot of good fighters out there. Um, I think the tried and true answer for me, there's only one correct answer, knowing that I need to be worried about their fighting abilities. And, uh, You're at 20 seconds. Okay, I'm going to go with... You got plenty of time. Plenty of time, okay. You don't, you don't have to take the full time, though. Yeah, I think uh, with that information, I think I can just safely pick Jonathan Wick. My first... Okay. I mean, no surprises there. No shockers. Okay. I'm gonna take All right. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to keep track as well, but go ahead and write that down. All right. Okay. Paxton chooses John Wick. Um, okay. Josh, it now goes to you. It is your turn for your first pick. Okay. My, and you also get a question. Yes. My question would be, are we drafting – are we interested in drafting – would it be best if we drafted characters that 
are that have some sort of positive personality traits or qualities. What? No. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like that. Movie characters. Hmm. This isn't exactly Josh's specialty. Let's put that out there. So don't don't. You could you could choose am, animated movies as well. They just can't have superpowers. Oh wait, that's huge though. That opens a huge door. So okay. Does Batman have superpowers? No. No, he doesn't. I'll don't probably just pick Batman. Okay. All right. That's a fair pick, dude. That's a fair pick. Hats off. Way to beat the system. <clears throat> okay, Josh picks Batman. Batman. Okay, Paxton, your choice. Okay, let me let me think of a good question. I feel like now that we know that like just fighting is important, I feel like that's like kind of says what this is about. At least that that, that enlightens me to think what's going to happen here. Is that your question? No, my question is. No, that's kind of stupid, but it'd be really cool if it's yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope that it's yes, but I don't think it will be. Is the character's wealth any kind of factor, like material wealth, like money or possessions or whatever? Like yes. Let's let's, let's say it's like a a, yes. a a general or whatever, and he has like artillery, whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. You're on the clock. Um. Goodness, what's a good movie that I like? I like the Batman pick. It's cool. Um, hmm. Let me think. Hmm. It's like it's like when you say superheroes, it just means they can't have like supernatural powers. Like even if they're like they can't. Yeah, no superpowers. I didn't say superheroes, just no superpowers. Right. So they just have, they have to be just like a normal human being that can do feasibly human things. Yeah, things that would. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you can think about it as things that could be realistic, right? So obviously okay. there are some action heroes that it's unrealistic, but I'll give that a pass. So stuff where they're not breaking the laws of the physical universe. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um. You know, I really like, like, Japanese culture, so I'm trying to think of, like, a, a good samurai to take. Um, who's that? Who's that? What's the name of the guy? Is it just It Man? IP Man? I'm not helping you. Yeah. What is that guy's name? I don't think that's his name. I think that's a Chinese guy. Oh, he's Chinese? Hey, man, I'll not, be sure, honest. not sure, though. Not sure. I would have known <laughs> to differentiate, I'll be honest. Um, no, I need to take, like, a Brainiac. Someone smart. Someone who can beat the battle of the mind. Um, who's like a really smart guy? Hmm. I'm gonna, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna take Oppenheimer. He's smart and he has the ability to use nukes. So that's gotta, you know, that's that that that's probably useful. Interesting. Oppenheimer, locked in, baby. Film of the year, 2023. Okay, Oppenheimer, it is. Um, and that was a minute and a half, so you're still within time. All right, Josh, it is your turn. Go ahead and ask me a question if you would like. Is the supposed fight to the death? No. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, um, presumably it could be like a knockout or some sort of incapacitation. Um, yeah. So, characters are well-equipped to trap or restrain others would be yeah. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. interest. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm thinking... <laughs> uh, I know, right? It's hard to like... Ha- what, what kind of entrapment are we looking for? Like, you can't, who's... like I said, you can choose from animated movies as well. Okay. They just can't have any sort of superpower. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And it could be a TV show too. I'll say, like, just what? Just I'm throwing Whoa. that out there. That's, that opens up everything. That's kind of big. Has that opened? Would that have changed your? I just I just want like any sort of media. Basically, oh, is your choice. My question. So, uh, um, this well, might, like movies, TV. This might be a, a secondary question, but what? tell me what if it we, is. 
Or we'll go ahead. We'll, 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 we'll start. Would, we'll open up the movie characters until Paxton's next round. So Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't so it's have like, an yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You mean TV? You mean TV, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, TV. Okay. okay. It was your initial question only for humans, or could it be non human characters? Um, let's stick with human characters. Okay. Hmm. Bum, bum, I'm gonna go. Bum, I'm gonna bum. go. Uh, Kevin from that one movie, the Christmas movie. That that guy who like the kid who who just oh like, Home Alone. Exactly. Kevin McAllister. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my god. Wow. What, what do you think he's gonna do in a fight? Huh? <laughs> what did he ever do? He's gonna trap you, and you will not be able to. Fight yeah, all right. <laughs> Number two pick from Josh is Kevin McAllister. All right, Paxton. We yeah. are to you. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The whole fact, like, we're not fighting to the death, I kind of... Threw good. you off a little? Yeah, threw me off a little bit. Who was my second pick? I already forgot. Was it It Man? <laughs> Oppenheimer. Oh, it was Oppenheimer. Okay. <laughs> um, TV characters are open. Um, um, hmm. Personally, I would have chose Heisenberg over Oppenheimer, but, you know. Does he have his own movie, too? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, let's let me. But it, I, he was in Oppenheimer. Oh, okay. So he was one passed. of the characters in the movie. It would have passed. It would have passed. Yeah, it would have been. Does uh does the characters like ethnicity have anything to do with it? Like, do we get plus points for diversity? Because that's always huge. Um, what's the question again? <laughs> Did the does characters? I, does the characters' ethnicity have anything to do with it? Like, if I diversify my characters. No. Okay. All right. Well, it's always worth asking. Um, TV show characters are unlocked, right? Mm-hmm. That was two questions. Oh. Yeah. No, that one doesn't count. That's fine. Yeah, You're yeah. just confirming something I already told you. Yeah. 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 Let me think. What's it? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I want to take a TV show character. I feel like. Um. What a, hmm, I've watched a lot of baseball recently. So why don't I get someone with like a bat in there? Someone who's athletic, got some speed, mobility to him. I'll take uh, I'll take uh, Jackie Robinson from Forty Two. Okay, Jackie Robinson. Interesting. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's, he's he gives me a little bit of mobility. You know, some speed on the bases if I ever need it. Mm-hmm. Get in it to get in and out. All right, number three pick, Josh. But go ahead and ask a question. So does so fight is a pretty vague word. I, I kind of want to try and zoom in. Is yeah, that like uh, is it a fight that involves physical contact or any sort of violence? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's uh, it's one of those fight fights. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Can you repeat that? Is it a it. fight that like requires physical contact or violence? Mm, yes. Okay. 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 Um. So, yeah, I'm thinking we'd want some sort of martial artist, someone who's very adept. With, See, that's uh, what that's what I was thinking. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, like weapons or um, just straight up punching. Uh, let's see. What about you know, like your- what? what? <clears throat> like Mike Tyson or something. Like I was just gonna go there. I was Muhammad gonna say Ali. Muhammad Ali. I was gonna say um, Rocky. Rocky, like from oh, uh, yeah, from uh, the Sylvester Stallone guy. You know. Yeah. He, yeah. 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 That's that's how we're going. Sylvester Stallone. So specifically, Rocky. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Rocky Balboa. It is. Goodness! Imagine if we squares up against Jackie. Who would even win that? Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, Pax, what's your All question right. for pick number four? Okay, okay. So their physical abilities is something we need to focus on. Um, is this gonna? Is there any like RNG in the battling, like dice rolls or something like that? Like no, no. Okay, so no RNG. Okay. That's good to know. 
Um, hmm. I feel like, man, I gotta... Re this guy, okay, all right, I'm taking... He doesn't have any superpowers, but he does a lot of crazy stuff. I'm taking Rick Sanchez as my fourth. He that's, doesn't technically, that's big. That is huge. He, does, he doesn't technically do anything superhuman. He's just using science, and he, he, he'll live by that. Sheesh. Yeah, yeah but look. the science is incorrect. Like, it's not... It's not real. I feel um, like that's every animated science ever, though. <clears throat> it's not... It's yeah, not, but it's not even close to realistic. That's fair. Uh, but I'm gonna let Josh decide whether or not he thinks that's a fair pick. You can limit him so he doesn't do like everything he does in the show. I I don't allow yeah. that. I don't allow it. You allow? Okay. Yeah. All right. Or I can take Morty if we if we just don't want to do that. Morty's pretty cool too. No, Josh said he'll allow it, so we're sticking with that. All right, Mr. Sanchez. Okay. Come on board. You're gonna get along great with Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. 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 So. Oh, yeah. Here's a question. Um, we've confirmed that it's not a battle to the death. Um, is it a battle that I'm trying? I'm trying to find out what the win condition is. That's literally the most important thing. So, yes, is it a yes. is it a fight to incapacitation or? Debbie, yes or no question. Yes, yes, yes. Hold, hold up. Let me let me see if I can phrase this better. Yeah, let him think. Like not knocking out or just falling. Let's see, let's see. I know everybody watching this is going to have so many better answers than I said. I already know that. And better questions, too, honestly. I'm on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked about diversity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, is it... Is Okay, so here, here's a long question. If we have two... <laughs> okay. Two competitors, A and B, and A knocks out B. Does A win? A knockout. Oh, no. Oh! Well, I might have screwed my cast up. You know what? You know what you can do, Josh, for a curveball? Hmm. <laughs> pick, pick an animal. I can't. <laughs> We're going to be human. <laughs> oh, it's got to be human? Yeah, oh, Jake said that. that Dang, never mind. Okay, so... Oh, so I have to pick someone. It's my turn still. Okay. Um, I think then if the fight is about violence, but knocking out doesn't actually matter, and it's not a fight to the death either. But their combat abilities matter. Yeah. I I'm complete. I am I'm completely confused. <laughs> um, how much time do I have? <laughs> I have to... Uh, you got like a minute and okay. 40 seconds. Okay, okay. 30, Ooh, sorry. Plenty of time. Yeah, I, I'm going to try, try and think this through. <clears throat> I got to think about a question. Hold yeah, on. I'll give you some time to think while I think. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more um, a teaser of something for the last round, your okay. last pick. Okay, okay, okay. Teaser's incoming. So, let's see. What in what sense could someone win? And there's no dice rolling, so it's not like it's like a board game or something. Or like well, you know, it's funny. Like a... It packs so I was thinking. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Max. <laughs> I was just thinking like it might be like a D and D session or something. Right. Like we have characters and then you roll dice to see who wins or whatever. But it's not that. Hmm. Um, I was gonna say we. Just, just some extra lore for 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 the simp podcast. Me and Paxton did a boxing match, and the winner oh, was yeah. whoever made the most contact, the most clean punches. Who and won? So, I can't remember who won. Oh, uh, I can't remember either. Actually, um, oh, that's a shame. That's a, oh, it came to me. I won. That's right, right, right. That's right. right. Okay. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> we um, gave Josh we minus points from Josh because he had a couple dirty hits. Yeah, not intentionally, yeah. not intentionally. Oh, do we know that, though? Do we know that? <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> we looked at the tape thoroughly. We sent it to the people in New York. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm going for people who are, like, light on their feet and quick, ideally. Um, yeah, yeah, People yeah. who would win in that scenario, potentially. Very ranged. Take a ranged character. Um, don't, don't. I was going to go Jackie Chan, honestly. <laughs> Jackie Chan? Well, you got to choose character, right? A movie? That's yeah, you gotta choose a character. 
That yeah. Jackie Chan is the actual. Oh, guy. oh, oh, oh. Whoopsie doopsie. <laughs> whoopsie doopsie. Does he act as Bruce Lee? Um, he, I mean, Bruce Lee was an actor. So. Okay. Uh, Wait, did he I, act I, as himself? I, 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 probably. I'm trying to think. I'm thinking of a few Jackie Chan movies right now. Um, but I don't want to give you any hints. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> I want you to. All right, okay. I'm going to need you to make a pick. Um, uh, gut, gut check. What's the name? Come of on, the, Josh. Uh, what's the name of the guy? The 70 year old guy who's like a roundhouse kick. Roundhouse kick. Um, Come on, Josh. Oh, oh, that's I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, Chuck Norris. He's I'm sure from... he acts as himself, doesn't he? In what movie? You got to pick a movie. I have to name the movie. Yes, I feel like that's, I feel like that's crucial that know what actual movie the There's a specific, is. yeah, there's that's a specific another movie. That's another character. Come uh, on, Josh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to have to make a pick. Um, we're going to go... <laughs> Fumbling around here. Do I... Um, the American Sniper? That, what, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Do you want me to look um, up name? Go ahead and somebody look up his name. I got yeah. it. Yeah. No, that's fair. He's the, we could... I think it was like Kyle, something like that. Chris Kyle or something like that. Uh, Chris Kyle, wow. Played by Bradley Cooper. I never saw it yet, but I heard it was really good. Okay. That's Chris an interesting pick. Kyle. All right. So, the little bit of information that I am giving you guys is you are not selecting characters for just one contest. Mm, okay. okay. So and... <clears throat> they are not all the same type of contest. It's so like a trial of wits and a trial of strength and a trial of, uh, I don't know, something like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but you packs, you guys will each have one question and one more selection here. Okay. All right. Oh, good. Uh, can you help me out? Do you have like two questions you want to ask Josh by chance and we can double up this? Cause I, I'm, I'm struggling coming up with like another good one. Well, I would ask, for, I would just make up a, a a specific contest and ask if that's among the set of contests. No, that's that's too that's too specific because if we get a no, it doesn't help us at all. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm, true. I think. <clears throat> but it would. I mean, one question I would want to ask is. Yeah. Is the team that wins the most contests the team that wins? That has to be the answer. I heard that has to be. That's yes. probably no yes, way. right? That, that's not. That's not worth asking. That's not worth asking. Um, okay. Hmm. Um. Hmm. It could be one contest is more important. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I like. You know what? I like going for brainiacs. I got a few of them on my team. Like, I think I just want to bolster that. But. Yeah, let me ask that. Is is does IQ matter? Like a character's ability, like just their overall intelligence and, and and wisdom is that going to bring me any any uh yes advantages okay all right i think i just want to go down that path i'm going to take benedict cumberbatch's sherlock holmes as my sherlock kid. holmes okay yeah. he has a lot of good reasoning and problem solving skills that could be useful but he doesn't all work. right sounds good that is your final pick they are locked in uh josh mm-hmm What's your question? Thinking, thinking. We have physical fitness. Oh, you know what you can ask? You know what you can ask? Ask, ask if they like. Ask if they like bring in, whatever weapons or whatever that they have from the show. Like, does that matter? You know what I mean? Like, does Sherlock Holmes get his full kit from the show, and I get to use all those certain items? You know what I mean? I feel like that'd be useful. But why am I helping you? It's the final pick, so. Hmm. But you know what I mean, like. I feel like I I kind of can deduce that already because like, like. The fit like the ability to f physically fight or enact violence kind of. Yeah, but it's like. That. But it's like, is Rick Sanchez gonna be able to bring his portal gun into battle? Like, you know what I mean? Like, do we get to use the items associated, or do we just get the character? Okay, like, I'll, I'll do you, I'll do you solid. I'll I'll ask that question, Jake. Ask it. Go um, ahead. Um, <laughs> do do characters get their canonical equipment in the battle? 
Yes. That helps me. That helps me. Okay. So, let's see. You need a big player, man. A big player. L- read off Josh's list so he's refreshed. Who he's got. Hmm. Josh, you have Batman, Kevin McAllister, Rocky Balboa, Jackie Chan. No, wait, you didn't do Jackie Chan. No, you did Chris Kyle. Kyle. Chris yeah. Kyle, yeah. I have a question. Is Iron Man a superhero? Wait, wait, wait. One, two. Oh, yeah. Good. Is Iron Man, I mean. Or does he have superpowers? Not technically, no. I mean, it's just like. Yeah, armor. but he has the core that protects his heart that actually powers things. I don't know. That's uh, once again. I will. I will give it to Paxton whether or not he thinks that's a fair selection. I think you know. If you uh, you can take him, if you can't come with anyone better, I think Batman and Iron Man's kind of like a bit of an L. Like that. That's, that's you know they're too similar. But if you can't come with anyone else, I mean he's like a he's like a response to that that question where like intelligence is is relevant. He is smart, and he's, he's got smart. and he's got the tools. That his canonical suit is part of the fight, so he's literally unstoppable in my mind. I, I would, like, I would. I'm not. I'm not picking Iron Man just because I, I see a superhero. I feel like he's specifically tailored for this fight. So fair enough. Yeah, I would. I would want. I would want Iron Man. Okay. All right. Um, Axe, if you have no argument against, which I don't think you did. Um, I will give you that, but Josh, you have to tell me what his real name is, not Iron Man. Tony Stark. Ooh. Yeah, oh, there it is. Got it. Wow, I actually. Think <laughs> that is a rare thing. That is a rare thing. I was thinking of taking him away from you, uh, if that wasn't the case. All right, so Paxton's list. We'll run it over again. Is Here we go. John Wick. Yes. Um, Oppenheimer, Jackie Robinson, Rick Sanchez, and Sherlock Holmes. And Josh has chosen Batman uh, or Bruce Wayne, Kevin McAllister, Rocky Balboa, Chris Kyle, and Tony Stark. All right, gentlemen. No there, diversity. No diversity. There Take are, away points. We have there kids. Are, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. There are five contests, and you will be selecting one character at a time to go into each contest, and you will be going into those contests blind so you select the character and then i will tell you what the contest is and then you will each have a certain amount of time um we'll give you the same amount how are we doing on time by the way has anybody checked we're at Um, 28 28 minutes okay I'll, i'll give you guys three minutes um and we'll see how that goes uh you will have three minutes to convince me why your character would be better essentially super oh, we, have fun. To under- we have to understand the characters yeah josh you might have screwed yourself <laughs> you might have screwed so yourself with your picks well, all right so anyways please take time you could take a little bit of time to think um and go ahead and choose your first character um, um i'll give you guys and talk my- through it talk through your thoughts and and this isn't timed yeah, yeah. um who is my fifth? I'm missing. Try to go fast. I got John Wick, Jackie Robinson, Rick Sanchez, Sherlock. And who is my fifth? Sherlock Holmes was your. You Sherlock have Holmes. John Wick, Oppenheimer, Jackie Oppenheimer. Robinson, Rich Sanchez, and Sherlock Holmes. Okay. What I think will be interesting, Josh, is if we match characters that seem like they're similar. We don't that would be to, interesting, you know, yeah. You don't have to listen to this, but I think that would be cool. So, who do you. Like, so who, 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 do you, who do you want to play first, and then I'll kind of play off of it. Well, well I'm Rick. missing one as well. I've got Batman, Kevin McAllister, and then American Sniper, Iron Man, and then who? I think Rocky was your favorite. Oh, yeah, right. So tell me who you're going to play, and then I'll just kind of like match him with someone I feel is reasonable. Hmm. You wanna, we got nothing to go off. That's the problem. Like It could be IQ. It could be combat. Who knows? I feel like... Um... Let's see. Oh, let's let's do Rocky first. Okay, Rocky. So he's kind of a brute, really good at hand to hand combat. Yeah. I feel like Jackie Robinson would be a. That, that seems like a pretty fair. Fair, from my list, that seems like a fair fight. They're both physical. They're both active. You know, yeah. they're both into, they're both into sports. It's perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Jackie, Jackie, come on up. Rocky, give it up, Jackie. Jackie. 
All right, you have selected your two contestants, Josh with Rocky Balboa and Paxson with Jackie Robinson. All right, we now enter the tournament. Okay. And we enter the first contest. I am going to set the stage for you. Okay. So this happens in the not-so-distant future. Widely known robot Mark Zuckerberg and Elon (laughs) Musk... (laughs) Two artificial intelligences have taken over and they have created an AI apocalypse for humans. And now most humans that are still here are underground. Who do you choose or how does your choice help you lead a a successful rebellion and revolt against the AI overlords in this apocalypse? Wow. Uh, we will start with Josh since Paxton started the first pick. Um, actually, we'll give Josh the choice. Paxton got pick number one. Josh, we'll give you the choice. Do you want to start or do you want Paxton to start? I'd prefer Paxton to start. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Paxton, All right. you are on the clock. Um, I'll give you three minutes, but I might I might bump it to five. We'll see how long these go. Okay. 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 So. We're looking for someone to lead a people, someone strong, someone that looks, yeah, I'm going to follow that guy to the ends of the earth. Now, I would argue Jackie Robinson is a movement. He he started just an absolute massive fan base for, for good reason. I think that in and of its alone, he has an aura about himself that people like, right? So he's got a big fan base. So people look up to this guy. So he's, you know, that's 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 something, right? That's something. He's already proven that he can... That he doesn't that he doesn't fade away in the spotlight. No, he shines. When the brights shine brightest, he's there. And you're not gonna miss this guy. He's clutch. He's clutch. Um He's also he also went through like lots of trials and pushbacks, right? So like he's very mentally strong. He's not gonna crack. When things get tough in battle, he's not cracking. No, 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 not at all. Um I would make an argument that charisma is very important, I think. A leader has to have the ability to communicate well to their troops, and their troops respond to that. And I would argue, I don't know a lot about Jackie Rob- Robinson's charisma, but what I do know is Rocky Balboa is horrible with the words. Absolutely horrible. So he wouldn't be able to be able to rally people around him with his with his words, right? So that's a pretty big fallback. Um, I'm pretty sure, sh- I mean, Jackie Robinson, he kind of, I'm sure he grew up on the streets. He had his, he had a, he's already seen a f- few fist fights, a few shares of brawls. You know, he's, he's got some combat skills behind him. Not to mention, he's really good at swinging a bat. So, you know, if, if that ever, you know, if we're using batons or something, that, that could be pretty helpful. Um, but yeah, you know, he's a leader of a team already. He's a, he's, 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 he's a franchise player and that, that, that is a lot of responsibility and he, he carried himself very well during that. And that's going to come super crucial, right? Cause you're looking for, you're looking for a face. You're looking for a face of a movement. Now, who are you picking? A fumbling, bumbling idiot, Rocky Balboa who can't put a sentence together. Sounds like a <laughs> kindergartner. Or are you choosing an absolute legend in the spotlight who doesn't crack, doesn't fumble. No, he rises to the occasion. He rises to the occasion like a phoenix and says, this is my moment. And you ain't taking it away from me. That's what Jackie Robinson did. He's a leader. I would follow Jackie Robinson to the end of the earth. And I think you would have to be a fool not to do it yourself. 30 well. seconds. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I think he's a, he's a fighter. He's a lover. You know, he's got compassion. Um, he raised a family, so he's a family man. You know, you love that. You love that. You, you want a family, man. You want someone who, who can control his own household well to control an army. And, then, you know, if he can do that, then he can control an army as far as I'm concerned. So Jackie Robinson for leader against leader of a rebellion. Count me in. Vote now. Time. That's time. Start That's up. three minutes. That seems like a good amount of time. Woo! Oh, gosh. Wow. It's all out there. Man. Uh, Josh. All right. Uh, I guess I'll start. So, first of all, I'll preface this with saying I actually didn't know Rocky had a stutter because I don't think I watched this movie. Um, and <laughs> also, I don't actually know anything about Jackie Robinson either. I think, yeah, he's a baseball guy. He's like, but but here's the thing. Wait, no, actually, I'm not going to bring that up. Never mind. Um, so, let's see. Rocky, as far as I'm concerned, is a very... Um, 
talented boxer and uh, has has <laughs> faced many difficult battles. Um, he's an example of the indomitable human spirit and represents like humanity's never ending desire for conquest and domination. Um, and so I would think he would be a, a representative for the fighting spirit of humanity. Um, in terms of actually like logistically setting up a, an association or a rebellion. Um, I don't, I don't think Jackie is actually going to be very effective at, uh, overturning the, uh, the AI overlords due to the fact that he can only play baseball. Even if he is very charismatic, how does that actually factor into disabling AI overlords? Well, you'd have to damage hardware. You'd have to shut down equipment. I don't know if Jackie knows what a, what a computer is. I don't think Rocky does either. <laughs> but... <laughs> But Rocky, Rocky can punch things, um, and so consider uh, Rocky punching uh, robots in a fist with his fists in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Imagine you have a police, like a, ro a humanoid robot police thing that approaches Rocky. It's not going to stand a chance. Now, unless Jackie Robinson is carrying his bat all the time, Rocky is going to just scrap that 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 uh that police guy so no 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 jackie robinson's fists are, are pretty pretty uh soft and and baby like paxton's making these these uh for those who are listening these uh 30 seconds disappointed uh figures or, or how do you say this uh, body expressions that uh jackie won't be able to punch the the police people but i'm saying rocky can so rocky's physically capable of, of such things. And so I, I would think he would be uh, capable of leading a troop to destroy the overlords. The end. Okay, time. All right. Uh, uh, do I get any conclusion thoughts? Closing arguments? Um, one I'm going to say... One sentence, one sentence, one sentence, one sentence. Uh, then Josh go. gets a sentence as well. Okay, one sentence. Go. Jackie Robinson is a winner. Rocky Balboa is a loser. Accolades are important. That's Rocky two Balboa sentences. Is not, Rocky Balboa is not <laughs> undefeated. Jackie Robinson is. Rocky Balboa lost multiple fights. Not a winner. Jackie Robinson, born a winner, died a winner. Done. That's all I needed. Josh? Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going I'm to be very philosophical right here. Someone who's yeah. never tasted defeat has no idea of what to improve on. The end. Okay. All right. Oh, um, I'm going to announce job, the job, winner. Josh. We'll be keeping Andrew. track as we go. I'll announce them right afterwards. Wait. This way for you? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. There we go. Um, and the winner for round one, I give... To Paxton. Yes, baby, yes. <laughs> Jackie Robinson. Let's go. Let's go. We can get into. I'm gonna. We're just gonna keep moving through this. Um, just the real quick points on that. Paxton did talk about um, Jackie Robinson, especially being a character who never gives up. Josh, you could have used similar stuff for Rocky Balboa and really hammered on it, but you didn't watch the movie and so you didn't know his journey and how he went from the bottom and basically mm. nothing to zero to hero yeah zero, zero to, to hero. hero like really like actually <laughs> um you could but used, i just like, felt i just felt like i would rather have what paxton was describing lead me against ai and i didn't feel it was very strong um josh for balboa to be punching robots if AI had taken over, I feel like that skill would not be super useful. Um, but I do think he would be in somebody who doesn't give up. You said something, I believe, I don't know if it was you or Paxton, but I think you said indomitable. Um, and I would want to follow somebody like that. That was you. Um, but anyways, they were good. Like Rocky would be somebody I'd want to follow. But 
I'm going to give it to Paxton. So you'd think, for, in theory, wait, like, if I articulated perfectly, you would go with Rocky? No, I, I don't know. Um, because you're, you're coming at this like you don't know anything about these characters, right? So you're, yeah. you're, you're seeing our arguments, and then yeah, and you, that's can, all the information you're working with. I don't care what you guys look up, too, especially when it's the other person's turn and they're going off. You feel free to look stuff up online. Um, I'm fine with that. That is all on the table because it's your ability to convince me of why that person. So I'm the one who's not really knowing much about him. I'm not going to put everything that that person has done into it. I'm going to consider what you're telling me. I think I think it was more profitable to to build up your character than to attack the other person's character. I made that very short in mind. I think you I think you might have come off come after my character a little bit. But that's probably because you went second, so. All right, I need you guys to select your next character. You want me to go first and then you try to pick off me? Okay. Um hmm. Let's see. so we're getting scenarios here. So this is interesting. Um who do I want to pick? Can you can I can you read your list to me? Yeah, I got Josh? Batman, Kevin McAllister, American Sniper, and Iron Man. Okay. I'll hmm. I'll go with um I'll go with John Wick. Mr. Wick. Okay. I feel like Batman would fit that the most. I, I like that. I think you're exactly right, actually. Okay. Batman it is. Okay. Um, this next contest, we're going in a completely different direction. Uh, for this one, um, Paxton and I, I'll give a little bit of context. Paxton and I recently um, started a diet. We have been cooking different foods together. And also, I love cooking shows. Um, I love baking shows, cooking shows. I enjoy that. So, you're, and, and you are involved in this one as well and and all of these actually put yourself there as well so you can describe the dynamics between that person and you if you would like you are doing a cooking show contest and you have three meals how does the person you chose help you win that contest against your opponent and for this one we will be going josh first i'm sorry josh this one is a uh is, is a difficult one um, to throw at you, to go first, you I'll give you a little bit of time to think, um, since this is so far, and this is like, I thought about saying something because when you guys were asking me questions, I was, you were so one track mind on the fight on that. It was an actual physical contest. And so now, now <laughs> you are stuck with these characters to tell me how they would help win a cooking contest. Can we yeah, pause? Pax. Can we pause the podcast? I need a pee. All right, pee break. Pee break for Paxton. Go yep. ahead. Tally um, it up, guys. Tally it up. How many I've had this up to this point? Josh, uh, why don't why don't you tell people about your experience with cooking? I mean, you don't have to. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean I... we'll just kill time while Paxton's gone. I mean, we could pause this part, or okay. uh, we could talk. Well, how's the diet going? Uh, when did how, you start? How's the diet going? Oh, we're talking about that. Um, we started the beginning of this month, um, mm. and it's going pretty well. So, uh, Pax and I are, the diets are a little bit different, um, but we've actually been sharing some of the meals and I cooked up a bunch of, um, uh, different meats last week. Uh, and then I brought some over to him. So we kind of been doing that. Okay. All right, Paxton is back. That was quick. That was Thank fire hydrant, baby. Promptness. Fire hydrant. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's okay. Un too much. Too much of a head. You know, just, rip. just okay. All right. <laughs> I said it. It's out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cut that out of the podcast completely. Okay, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, Josh, you've had some time to think. Uh, thanks to your uh, opponent, Paxton, you have three minutes. Okay. And go. So, Batman is uh physically at an elite place in his in his uh in his physical capabilities uh, that was ter like horribly articulated what i'm trying to say is <laughs> batman can do a lot of cool things with his body which um involves i would imagine cutting onions quickly or tomatoes or um you know the 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 various fine-tuned manual um 
processes that chefs will undergo when, when preparing a meal. So um, I, w- I would say as a highly trained individual, he would be very useful in the preparation of the um, of the ingredients for the for the meal. And um, I would say because we're, if I'm correct, this is like a 2v2. So I'm, I'm with Batman, Pax is with John Wick, right? So yes. I, as someone who's living by myself, have been forced to learn how to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, I've cooked for myself for upwards of like five years um, because, you know, I also went to college and, and had to dorm by myself and prepare meals. So I actually have probably a couple extra years of history with uh, cooking than Paxson compared to Paxson. So there's that advantage. So I have Batman working with me as an ingredient preparation specialist. And I'm, I'm this orchestrator position where I'm just like knowing how to make the best possible meal and, and what, what should be cooked, how it should look like. I've dealt with sauces before. Um, and uh, I think I would, I would stand a pretty good chance... Um, I think Batman has a bunch of cool gadgets that I could probably take advantage of. Um, not sure what specifically, but, uh, he's got, he's a high tech individual. One minute left. So there's that. Uh, let's see what else. I could, I could also instruct Batman to potentially assassinate Paxton. So that could help out. But, uh, I don't know if we're, our kitchens are nearby or if that's even in the rules, but, um, we we could play a little dirty, perhaps. Batman's got a got some tricks up his sleeve. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay, two and a half minutes. Paxton, the floor is yours. Okay, I just want to quickly attack one of your points that you made. Your first minute was going into Batman's abilities and his body and stuff. That is irrelevant when it comes to the kitchen. You don't really need a lot of strength. Now, here's what John Wick's gonna bring to me, and here's what I think. He is a man who is refined focused and tactical those are skills you really want in a kitchen you don't need i mean communication will be a little key if i'm working with it but you don't need a ton right he's going to be on the dot and he's going to make sure the seasonings is just right he's a man of precision he's not going to mess up he's not going to go too much he's not going to do too little he's going to do just right he's a man that is precise in the way he thinks he's also a man who from what we know also know is very wealthy so there will be no there'll be no expense spared when it comes to what i'm going to be able to present to you right we have, we, have, we have the backing, we have funding, we're good. You're going to have the best ingredients possible. Third, I have seen every single John Wick film multiple times. What does this give me? This gives me knowledge. I know how John Wick works, and I know how he thinks. We're going to have synergy. I know him very well. Josh, as far as I know, has barely seen any of the Batman films. He doesn't know Batman. They won't know, they won't have, they won't know how to work together. But I will know how to work with John Wick. We will be a better duo and more effective because we have an understanding of one another. Um, John Wick is also, he's a man with a really good palate, a really, a more refined palate than I would, you know, than we've seen Batman need. Um, he's got a great taste in alcoholic beverages, as we can tell from the movies. And he also has more, more, how do I phrase this? More, he's just got more, uh, diverse, uh, things he eats like duck and stuff that we see in the films. Um, I think John Wick is a man who is extremely determined, he, he, and he, he likes competition. He'll thrive under the competition, especially when things get tense, because kitchen, things can get very tense. Things can get very um, explosive, as we see from many cooking shows. Uh, take Gordon Ramsay. This will not affect uh, John Wick. And we've seen this. Like this, this, this is a man who won't care how things get. He's going to be in the moment. He's going to be focused, and he's going to deliver his best, absolute best. And I... I, I, I completely relate with that. I'm very much the same way. I don't settle for mediocre. I settle for the best. And if, you, if, you, if you're eating food from me and John Wick, you can guarantee the best from both of us. All right. Thank you, Paxton. Yes. Um, Josh, I, I'm actually, for this one, going to give you guys time to rebuttal. So, Josh, I'm going to give you about a minute to rebuttal, and then we'll turn it to Paxton to finish it off. <clears throat> So when you said physical capabilities are irrelevant in the kitchen, I would disagree. I I guess what I was trying to say with that statement was fine motor skills and the ability to repetitively and precisely move your hands. 
Um, th- that's really what, what it's all about. And that's what I was going for with the whole cutting and slicing onions really quickly thing, you know. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, also, um, I still think Batman could probably assassinate John Wick during the competition. I don't think Paxson even mentioned anything like that. But, like, I know John Wick is an assassin, but with enough preparation, I think Batman could also potentially take out the competition. And uh, it would be it would be a cinch from there. So... Um, also, you have to communicate to John Wick what you would want to cook as a meal, even if he is precise and is good at attention to detail. If he's never had experience in the kitchen, then he is not going to be able to to compete. I have experience, I can communicate to Batman, but you don't have any and doesn't look like John Wick does. If he eats something, he he can have exotic experiences. But if he doesn't know how to cook, he doesn't know how to cook. The end. Okay, Paxton, your response. Well, uh, a big part of your argument was that you'd be able to assassinate me. And this implies that Batman is wearing his armor. And I would say that is an extremely big disadvantage if he's walking around in big, bulky armor. This is going to lead to a lot of liability and a lot of just, like, messes around the kitchen. You need a clean kitchen, man. Do we remember seeing John Wick's kitchen? It was absolutely crystal clear. Ask Gordon Ramsay. Having a clean kitchen is crucial. Washing your dishes, everything. And we've seen that from John Wick. He's a very clean man. Also, I think you very much underestimated my abilities to cook. Very much so. In fact, I have cooked a pristine, pristine stew that my parents absolutely loved. Ask them anytime you want. It had, it had, uh, it had Asking them is not part of the game. But, you know, <laughs> on the side. It had, it had a beef and a bunch of other I'm, I'm good at stew. I'm good at meats. Anything that involves meats, I'm working on it. I'm doing very good. And I think you've underestimated my abilities. Um, yeah, that would be mine. All right, Buttle. Um, I think me and John Wick are a more formidable duo because we are both com- we we are much more competitively okay, wrap driven, it up. and me and him will want to win more than you, and that's going to show in our cooking. It means more to us to be able to win, and I think that shows in both of our personalities. Okay, so things that I liked, um, I kind of thought it was creative of josh to give an angle of just taking out the competition um a i hadn't really considered that option myself so i did like that paxton you can wait i'll finish a few things then i'll come back to you uh and i also enjoyed josh saying that because of his circumstances of living alone he has to learn how to cook and so he's cooking for himself and he can help um, use that to team up with Batman, use his skills and Josh's cooking knowledge. Uh, so I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed Paxton talking about some of the qualities that John Wick has as far as determination, some of his knowledge that he has on things that you can see in the film. Uh, my favorite point was in Paxton's rebuttal. And it was when he talked about John Wick keeping a clean kitchen. If you watch any sort of cooking show, one of the key factors that they will point out is the cleanliness of the kitchen, of the people who are in there. Uh, And that isn't just in general. If you go to a restaurant and you look at their kitchen, you can learn a lot about, would I want to eat this food? So Mm -hmm. having a clean kitchen is crucial. Nobody wants food being cooked with dirty equipment. And my decision on round two for the clean kitchen point itself is Paxton. Yeah. That was that was the what it that was, was pretty clutch. even. It was pretty even, but that was the one thing that put it over the line. Um, also, like this is a cooking competition. So even if you took out my, even if you killed both of us, you don't win the competition. That's not a you, you, like you got to present the best food, right? And if you I consider that it, too, but Paxton did not include that in his rebuttal, so I was kind of leaving that out. I think if you would have brought that up in your rebuttal, that would have been a good point. Oh, or right. or in the beginning. All right, so Paxton is up two to nothing. We Ooh. have three competitions left, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, but Josh, you really you really need to win this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. Um, it is going to take a different turn again. Uh, so I'm going to set the stage. Josh, you are out walking. And you see 
wait, the wait. cat. Do we want to pick the character first, or are you going to tell oh, us first? Oh, yeah. yes. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I gave a little away. I'm going to change. There's a cat. There's a cat. Oh. I'm going to I'm gonna switch. I'm going to switch. Are we coming back to that one, or is that one out? Um, we don't know. We'll see. All right. All we'll right. see. Uh, I pick. Thank you so much. That I almost screwed this whole thing up. You did. Nice. Uh, you pick first, and then I'll pick off you. So just uh, unless unless you don't want to do that, I think it's makes it a little more interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, you're fine. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go for Kevin McAllister. Oh, in your dire need, your dire yeah, moment of need, I you feel go like with Kevin. I might know this character the most, maybe. <laughs> Have you seen the movie? All right. But like 10 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) So you're going with Kevin. Uh, I think Sherlock's like a really good, because he's kind of, yeah, I think Sherlock, I mean, it's better than Oppenheimer. So I'm going to go with Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Um, Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we, in one of the previous podcast episodes, did a whole episode on music that we like and why we like that music. Paxton and Josh, I believe, have even jammed uh, and met together and played music. And so music is something that we love, something that we care about, something that we've talked about. What I want to know is how does your teammate, the one that you took with you, how will they help you win a musical contest? specifically or you can think of something like maybe battle of the bands but you've got one show to play with them how do they help you win a musical contest now you you are with them so this is you guys are working together let's say let's let's also do this let's say it's a you know a few months down the road it's not just you go and you play right now you've got time to pick a song uh to find the instruments that you would play and you've got a shot to compete for the best song. You have one song. Okay. Do we have to so, just pick the song? Is that part of the No, 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 okay. no. You okay. can you can discuss however you want, okay. but you just are trying to win a musical contest against the other person. So Paxton, we are starting with you this round. Okay. Okay. So it's me and Sherlock. We got to put some music together. Now, what, let's just start with me. I don't bring a ton of musical talent, but I think I bring more instruments than Josh. So that's cool. Um, I'm bringing the piano and the drums. I, I grew up playing the piano. I've got about six, uh, five years of training under my belt. Don't play a lot now, but if you give me a few months, you know, I can bring it back into there. I also play the drums. Shout out right there. Um, I think if we were doing a duo, I'm going to want to stick to my piano skills. And then what, what, what's Sherlock going to be bringing? Well, Sherlock, Sherlock's a really good problem solver. And... He'll be able to pick up any instrument I give to him. And, you know, I think he's going to be very easy to be able to pick up any new skills. But we've also already seen Sherlock play the violin. What a good duo we're starting with. A piano and a violin. That's all you need. Um, Also, I think, you know, my vocals aren't great, but I would argue my vocals are better than Josh's to a certain extent. And I have a little bit more range. So if we wanted to add a little words, that option's there. You know, little words, little... But I think the piano and the violin go great together. Um... Me, me and Sherlock also have a great sense of style, and that's that's really key when you're putting on a performance. You got to be able to be presentable, look appealing, and what you know, Sherlock's got great sense. He wears suits, and ask anybody on Sunday who cleans up the best. I mean, it's pretty much hands down me. So we're looking presentable. We know our instruments very well. This is this is great. Like who wouldn't want to see this? This is a great duo. Also, I would. Me and Sherlock are going to have great just synergy. We're going to be friends. This is gonna this is gonna be, this is gonna be a show. That shows love. It shows compassion. It shows, it shows determination. It shows, it shows the best qualities of what it means to be an artist. And also, I think I bring a little bit more, a little bit more variety knowledge of music. I have a, I have a more bigger palette than Josh. Josh might be more refined, but I have more knowledge of different genres. Uh, I like everything. I mean, it's the same with food, right? Like, I just like everything. I listen to everything. I, I'm constantly. I, I, I think I listen to more music than Josh too, because I'm always listening to music, and and I know tons of artists. I know ton, tons of instruments. Um, and again, I think I'm gonna keep harping on this because I think this is important. My competitive spirit is twice Josh could ever dream to be. My absolute determination to win will be focused, laser focused. 
to win. And I think that's going to show. And I think that's going to be beautiful for the audience. Again, just imagine. I think it's really hard when you only have two instruments, but I think you can't get better than a piano and violin, which both of us already have experience. Kevin McAllister, it's a bit lacking. He's a bit He's a bit of a kid. He's going to be a bit of a goofball. I don't know. I just, I don't see it with them. I don't see the synergy. I don't see the love. I don't see the compassion. And uh, I think it's pretty easy. Hands down, I would rather see, if we're just talking about, if we're just talking solely, put me and Josh out of the picture, I mean, we're, we're taking uh, Sherlock 10 times, uh, 10 to 1 over Kevin McAllister. And that would be my argument. Okay, um, thank you, Paxton. Oh, wait, you have 15 seconds. Um, I also think just uh, Sherlock Holmes has more just general knowledge of life, and it will, that will be able to be conveyed in our lyrics, and it's going to be more relatable to people as we're able to bring more right. relatable life experiences That's time. to our music. Okay, thank you, Paxton. Josh, you have three minutes on your response starting now. Okay. So very like I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to brag, but that's part of the that's part of the 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 fight here. So I've been playing piano for seventeen years. That's like that's like mostly Paxton's life, honestly. Um anyways, it's it's been it's been uh, my favorite instrument so far, like the whole time and what's interesting about piano the ones that i play they're electronic so they're capable of um emitting different sounds it's not just piano you can obviously tune the the output sound to say guitar or um violins or whatnot so this is a pretty crucial detail you might say hmm well paxton can do that too with his piano right well first of all his piano is one of those very like minuscule and uh, low, low-end low pianos that only have like six other tunes. Not to throw shade at you, Paxson, but um, I have experience with actual music production um, and I can actually sync up different instruments on the same track. I can like create MIDI tracks. I know how to do sound processing. I've uploaded actual like tracks of me playing the piano on YouTube and, and I, I can actually like I know how to produce music essentially you don't have any of that experience that's gonna help me out in the long run um, also uh, I in terms of music knowledge I would say I also listen to music basically every single day um, and there's a lot of advantage to listening to music um, and I can explain why it's because like you start to notice patterns, you start recognizing chords, and you can actually apply them to improvisation. Like, you can you can actually come up with something new and refreshing. I do this often, and it's, it's something You got that, a minute left, and you still haven't told me anything about Kevin McAllister. Uh -huh. Just letting you know. Understood. It's because I, I've shown, like, an understanding of music theory. So I can actually, like, compose music, and and I can, like understand how to create new music on the fly that helps me a lot in an actual in an actual uh, competition i don't think kevin is gonna really help a lot other than perhaps playing some sort of triangle but I, I wouldn't even want that because in the competition what i would probably do is say kevin just sit down and watch me and i'm going to pre-prepare like a bunch of tracks and play them with some sort of soundboard and combine them in real time, kind of like a DJ, um, and play piano like live or, or some other instrument. Um, I yeah, I don't I don't think there's even a competition here because I just have like superior knowledge. I've been around longer. I've been doing music way longer than Paxson. Um, I can play violin. There's no limit to the amount of instruments I can play, and I can combine them and in any way I want. And I know how chords work. Like I know music theory. So I think I think I've got this in the bag, honestly. All right, I'm going to need a rebuttal um, from Paxton, and then it will go to Josh. Okay. Uh, I think you have a lot of good points and a lot that I, you, you know, you spot a, spoke a lot of facts, but one thing that you really fumbled on is this is an argument why you would be good with your character, and I believe you really fumbled that in your rebuttal. I don't, I, I mean, you literally just threw your character to the side, and that's not what this is about, and I, I think I made better arguments on why me and... Me and Sherlock would be a better duo together, and that's kind of what I tried to present. Um, also, we have Dr. Watson that we're going to bring in to help, you know, mix this up. He also brings in a lot of um, experience in the music industry. 
Um, so we're going to have a little bit more um, more dialogue with more people. So we're just going to, you know, all the expertise will be there. There will be none lacking. Also, you are you are limiting yourself to one instrument of the piano. And I'm not limiting myself. I can also bring in the drums if I need to. Um, also, one thing when it comes to creating music is showing initiative. And who started our little band? I think that person was me. And I showed the leader of that band. And I think you need those qualities. All right, wrap it up. When it comes to starting and producing music, um, I think me and Sherlock are just a a better duo and not a one man band. Hey, Josh, okay. your response. Yeah, so as I said before, I, I did upload some of my own music on my own channel, so that I think that shows initiative just to counter that point. But also, in, in terms of Kevin's usefulness, um, first of all, I think the objective is to give the better show, not to synergize with your partner. Um, so. There's that, but also, I could have Kevin actually set traps and and disrupt your show, honestly. And so it's it's very easy for him to interrupt and to reduce the quality of my competition. So there's that. <laughs> I'm gonna bring that up once again. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Okay, this one's a little bit hard for me to choose um a few things um i enjoyed josh putting himself forward in this one even though it was a little bit of a brag the it is the two of you together so you're thinking of both of you together and he mentioned specifically the goal is to win but i did appreciate paxton calling him out on it because uh, I, I said, who would help you win this contest? Or how would this character help you win this contest? Now, the objective is to win. Um, but then Josh uh, brought in a very personal aspect to his character and something that is specific to them, and that's Kevin McAllister setting up traps. Now, in the previous one of Batman taking out uh, John Wick uh, in the baking contest, that's a little bit... That's a little bit different, uh, but setting up traps, uh, subtle traps on a band floor is something I, you know, could see Kevin doing. It was something very specific with him. Um, Batman, as a note, I don't think tried to kill anybody either um, in a lot of his movies. But anyway, I, I think that was his thing note. was avoiding them. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he, yeah, he didn't right. use guns. Yeah. But yeah. Right. But I did really like this one. Yeah. Um, and so I'm giving the win to Josh. Final. Solely on that last part, not so much on his own ability, but that there, there, it was a very small part of it. Um, so I almost, I almost gave it to Paxton just because I think actually Paxton, if you wouldn't have mentioned that fact, Josh wouldn't have said anything about it, and I would have given you the victory. Yeah. Um, but not, he brought, I, yeah, he brought in Kevin at the end, and he spoke to what Kevin does, and that set up booby traps. And so your performance would be, you know, uh, stepping on cars and balloons popping and bowling stepping balls rolling across and yeah. you know, little toy cars. Um, all right. We are moving on to the next challenge. So it's two to one Paxton right now. Please select your contestants. Uh, let's be honest. I was never going to win that one. That was I was up against the wall. So unlucky. Good, good argument, though. Appreciate good argument with your final one. Uh, I'm gonna go with Rick Sanchez. Yeah. Okay. Did I choose Iron Man already? I think I'm gonna go with him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this one, Josh, you are walking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are walking down the street, and you see a cat sitting in the road, and a car is driving fast down the road does not see the cat now you see this is a mother and she has a bunch of kittens with her so you being the man that you are you run out grab the cats save them and are hit by a truck or a car paxton you see this happen to your friend josh you immediately tell me to call the police and you run out to see if he's okay and while you run out, another car comes and hits you. At the moment you guys are both hit, you instantly die. And you are isekai'd mm -hmm. to another world. And you are given 
And now, anybody who doesn't know Isekai, uh, Isekai oh. basically means you're transported to another world. It's a thing that happens in anime. And Josh and I are big anime fans, and we're trying to get Paxton into it. So that's why we're doing it Isekai. Yeah, he's dipping, he's dipping it in. We'll see what he thinks. Get my feet wet. You guys are isekai to a fantasy world, and you are told by the god of that world that you have been tasked with killing the demon lord and rescuing the inhabitants of this world from an impending apocalypse. You have chosen Iron Man and Paxton. You've chosen Rick Sanchez. Josh, we're going to start with you. You're going to tell me how your character is going to help you achieve your task. Okay. And the clock starts now. So first of all, um, if that is our overarching goal, um, I, I think Iron Man would probably be generous enough to give me the iron suit, or rather produce one. Um, there's also the case that has to be made that a new world will typically involve new powers. Um, I'm not sure if you specified that, but there, there's probably going to be some sort of fantastical element to it. Do you want to comment Fantasy on that? Fantasy world with a demon um, leader. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll say that that's probably the case. Right, so there's going to be... Um, on top of all the physical capabilities that Iron Man has with his, his technology, his capability of developing such technology, and, and I will note that isekais are typically placed in in like mid middle age time lo- time zones like or what how do you say this um in they're they're modeled or they're typically placed in the in the time area of the middle age so there's there's you know there's like carriages and and um taverns and whatnot like you know that that middle age vibe right we are superior in terms of technological capabilities we have so much more understanding of science and even if there is magic i feel like we would be able to overcome very much of it and we we just have that technical technological advancement that that is just lacking severely in such situations um just the iron man suit like we can fly right demons fly how are how is paxton going to attack this right like demons may be able to deal with like camouflage or or sort of um stealth and and so iron man can actually seek this out has has capabilities for infrared detection all sorts of different detection mechanisms that we can use um it's going to be very difficult for this demon king to escape um iron man provides a lot of utility in actually accomplishing my uh, my objective and i i think our, our knowledge of the world is going to carry us. So uh, I'll stop there. Okay. You have 40 seconds left on the clock. Um, Paxton, it goes to you, and you are on the clock. Okay. Um, well, here's one very, very big advantage I think I have in this, and is that is Rick Sanchez is no stranger to random fantasy worlds. In fact, he is more commonly there than in the normal world. So... Being able to adapt to this world, we are going to be like that. In fact, it'll just be natural for both of us, because I've seen all the shows, so I know all about these random fantasy worlds, and Rick's been there. So we'll be able to adapt way quicker. Um, I think the IQ of Rick Sanchez, the smartest man alive, smarter than Iron Man at developing weapons, I think that is going to also be a bigger advantage for us than for Josh and Iron Man. And I'd like to also say, I don't think Iron Man in his character would care that much to even help uh, Josh in this venture. And um, I think there would be a lot less, there's gonna be a lot less heart and a lot less passion in what they do than what me and Rick do. Me and Rick are going to tackle this challenge with much more, with much more honor. Um, as far as disposal of weapons, you name it, we have it. I mean, we got a portal gun, baby. We can, we can summon in whatever we want. We've also seen Rick be able to create life from nothing so we can we can we can we can summon an army if we need to you know build an army together and 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 challenge this demon king with our army of whatever you know let's let's say like an army of um chickens with bazookas all right we're gonna go with that we're gonna we're gonna create that and we're gonna go in we're gonna match it. it's gonna be a more epic battle keep that in mind it is going to be an epic battle of chickens 
with bazookas versus an army of demons. I mean, again, I don't, I don't, Rick's already faced demons. We've seen him face demons. This isn't going to be new territory for him at all. I mean, this is going to be another day in the park, you know? Like, this, this, this isn't going to be anything special. It's not going to be anything crazy. We're just going to get the job done, get out, and um, I don't know what happens if you complete the quest. I don't know if I go back to my body, but we're just going to get right back on with life. Um, so, yeah, weapons, you know, armies, we're, we're there. We're there for it, and this is going to be another walk in the park for me and Rick. Um, what else do we got? Um, so the, I mean, the portal gun alone, I don't want to harp on that too much, but that's kind of OP in this. Like, we, our, our traveling time is going to be quicker than Iron Man 2. I mean, you can fly. We can teleport, man. We're going to be there even quicker. So I don't think that suit's going to give you too much of an advantage when it comes to, like, getting it done speedy. I think we got that advantage, too. We're going to be quick. We're going to be quick, and it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be quick. Um, I don't think, again, Iron Man's never faced a demon that we've seen, so it's going to be new territory. The fight's going to be more scrappy. There's going to be more chances for liability, more chances for, like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Me and Rick, we know it's coming. We've done this before. We've been through this. We've been through the fires of hell together, and this is going to be just another day. Another day in the office for us, you know? It's going to be quick. Um, I think... It's time. Okay. Josh? I, I'm rebuttal. very glad I have this time for rebuttal because this is a, a crucial point. Um, Rick is a nihilistic, hedonistic lunatic that only cares for self-pleasure, as far as I'm aware, and has no source of sense of like moral justice. He literally won't care that there's a demon king torturing people. He literally doesn't care. And to be presumptuous enough to think that you can persuade him to help you in that endeavor is a little little preposterous. I, I would say Rick would very likely not not care at all. He'd probably just go to a different dimension. He literally just wouldn't care. Rick doesn't care. Iron Man, the, the fiber of his being is a superhero. Like, he literally is the guy who's going to take down the Demon King. That's, I don't even have to convince him. Sure, he's hard to convince anyways, but, like, he's going to do the job. He's, like, he has this conviction. This has to be, this has to be done. So, I, I think you're going to have a trouble getting Rick to help you out in even doing this objective. The end. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Paxton, finish us off. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. How am I going to get Rick to like me or want to complete this quest with me? That's very easy. Episode 2, Season 1, we see that Rick has a real deep consideration and he loves cats. What did I just do? What, was, what, what did I just do before I died? That's right. I saved a family of cats from dying. We know Rick has an attachment to cats. We know this. This is a fact. I tell him this. Listen, buddy. I just saved a whole family of cats. Now, how am I going to... This is going to be quick. It's not like I'm asking him to spend the whole day with me. No, this is going to be a 30 seconds, you know? And I think, there, I think I think, Rick's absolute obsession with violence and, and attacking people, it, it'll be fun for him. You know, it's, there's no challenge here for Rick. You know, nothing has ever been challenging for him. But I, so this, 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 this is going to be quick. It's going to fulfill his, his inner passion to kill things and to commit violence. And that's going to be the thrill of it that'll 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 want him to go into battle with me. And he loves cats. So we already have that passion, that connection together, and he's gonna wanna help me. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh that was interesting. Took some interesting turns there as well. I felt like it kept could have kept going if we kept rebuttaling that. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Oof, what things I appreciate about both of them. Uh, I do appreciate Josh's bent and his rebuttal on attacking Rick Sanchez. Um, I do, I do think Rick brings a lot of things. I liked Paxton's point of he, this isn't new for him. He's been to fantasy worlds before. He's been there, done that. He would not be surprised by this. But there was one point. Um, that I would take away from Paxton and when he said that he was saving the cats when I explicitly said Josh was saving the cats and Paxton saw his friend get hit and then ran to help Josh um, that's a little bit of a critique um, this one's hard because I think it really comes down to the fact for me 
that would, I, I think Rick would have an easier time of it. But it really comes down to, would he be motivated to do it? And I'm trying to just base it on the things that were said. And I think I'm going to give this victory to Josh. Hey, let's go. And I'm going to give it to him because you spent a lot of time, Paxton, talking about he loves cats and that being the reason. Um which would make sense in one case because but i never said anything about the cat whether or not the cats were saved whether or not rick was there and saw it and knew it and would have trusted you um if you would have addressed some of those things i might have given it to you um also i just wanted to be tied up two to two so i'm a little bit biased Um, (laughs) so okay so we're gonna move on to the final challenge which you guys do not get to select because it's just going to be oppenheimer versus chris kyle now there have been a common theme of me choosing competitions and contests uh, that are personal to us so this last one is no stranger to that and there is one other thing we have done a podcast on, and that is our favorite video games. And all three of us have played one video game in particular a number of times. So I want you guys to convince me how you would win in an Overwatch competition with your teammate. And I believe, let's see here. I believe it was Josh who started first last yes. time. So Paxton, you start first. How is Oppenheimer teamed up with you going to win an Overwatch match against Josh and his teammate? And okay. go. Well, we've already seen Josh win a full episode off going off accolades. So let me set up my accolades a little bit more. You know, I'm a, I'm an ex professional Overwatch player. In some respects, I'm not even going to need Oppenheimer to win this battle. So let's just put that there. I'm a former top 500 player of LA Assassins. Tier 3, baby. Um, Overwatch. Play Overwatch. Went to the Grand Finals. Been there. Done that. Uh, I can play any role. I'm also experienced professionally on every single role. uh, Specifically in support, though. So I got that going for me. Um, Josh has experience as well. You know, obviously he's a very good gamer as well. But I think when it comes to that game in particular, I'm going to have the upper edge. Um... Oppenheimer is very familiar with computers. In fact, he was there when they were like inventing them. He knows computers inside out and backwards. So when, when he gets on there, he's going to log in pretty quick and he's going to be, you know, right there snappy, right there with me. I'm also, I've also coached Overwatch. I've coached two teams in the past. So getting him used to the game is going to be really quick. It's going to be snappy. Like I'm, I'm going to be able to get him in and get him going. Uh, for the meta, I think we're, you know, the best meta for 2v2 is going to be like a support tank duo. Um, I think... Um, Let's see. Um, There is a character whose ultimate is literally a black hole, and I think Oppenheimer will do great at running Zarya down because he's going to love black holes, and that's just right up his scientific alley, and he's going to love that. Or we could run with, like, Bastion, who has, like, nukes from above, and, you know, Oppenheimer loves nukes, so a whole ultimate that's around blowing stuff up, he's going to like that, and he's going to adapt to that hero very, very quickly. Um, he is also an incredibly intelligent man. He brings more intelligence to the battle. We're going to be able to um, outmaneuver Josh, Josh and uh, Chris Kyle on the battlefield because we have a better understanding. We're going to be able to adapt faster. Really? Um, yes. I think Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer will enjoy Overwatch more because he likes computers more. Chris Kyle, you know, he, he's not going to have a lot of interest in this, in like in video games and stuff. He's he's more into the real world. It's going to be hard for him to really find a fascination with Overwatch and gaming. I think that's going to come a lot more naturally to Oppenheimer. Um, me and Oppenheimer. Um, uh, let's see. What, what else can I use? Um, there is. <laughs> there's. Um, there's maps that Oppenheimer might be familiar with, like, uh, let's see, there's Hollywood. Uh, we know, I'm sure uh, Oppenheimer went to Hollywood. He's already going to know his way around those kind of territories, that kind of areas. Um, but yeah, mostly it's going to come down to, I think, me and Oppenheimer will have a better understanding of what the current meta is, and that's going to help us beat 
Josh and Chris Kyle. Okay, Josh, your response. Okay. Um, so Chris Kyle is um, a sniper that was born in 1974, died in 2013. I'm looking this information up right now. Um, this was during the realm of the development of the modern PC. So you have access to keyboards and you know very well how to use them. Um, it's It would be a surprise to me if he was as incapable of using a keyboard as Robert Oppenheimer. Um, I also think that this uh, this idea that they'll be able to outmaneuver us tactically is a little absurd. Maybe Paxton, but I, I have some gain sense, and my fellow American sniper may have quite a bit of game sense, because, you know, battlefields and actual gunfights and whatnot. So he's going to, like, expect enemies to show up around corners and, and know where to look, and so... I would say it would be very difficult to surprise Chris Kyle. Um, he's going to be able to be aware of his surroundings. Very, especially, although he's not in real life, on the screen he's going to be able to take it, take it in and, and understand what's going on. Um, Robert Oppenheimer, I don't know if he has any sort of formal training in that regard. Um, you may think, okay, how does sniping translate to video game um, performance? So... Actually, here's an anecdote, but there is a 70-year-old retired sniper that uploads very uh, very frequent uh, clips of his his accolades and sniping people on, I think it was like COD or Battlefield or something. And and so it is it is an impossible, it is an out-of-the-realm of possibility that those skills actually translate. The positioning of the crosshairs, the, the calculation of, of the bullet speed, and although there isn't gravity in Overwatch, it's... It's uh, it's definitely something that can come naturally to snipers. There are sniping characters in Overwatch. Big point. We got Widowmaker. We got Anna. Um, especially Anna. Especially Anna. The 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 ability to hit moving targets would be something right up Chris Kyle's territory, and Anna is is excellent for that. And I can use him as a support and be something like Reinhardt. I've played Diva a bunch, and so. I've had uh, I've had I have some actual no game knowledge of of Overwatch, and all he needs to do is keep me in his line of sight, keep shooting me, and just throw some shots on the enemies here and there if he if he feels like it. And I'm full health. It's really easy to explain that to him. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna attack Oppenheimer. I don't think he's going to know what WASD is. Um, I think <laughs> Chris Kyle might know what WASD is. And I think um, I think I'll leave it there. That's it. All right, that was right at three minutes. Well done, Josh, uh, for the time right there. Paxton, your rebuttal starts now. Okay, limiting someone by their era is I think super lame. And if if that's gonna win you it just because Oppenheimer didn't happen to be born as later as Chris Kyle, I don't think that's gonna limit Oppenheimer. He's a genius, and I think he's gonna be able to overcome that pretty quickly. Uh, Overwatch is nothing like real-world combat, and I think when Chris Kyle takes that into using that, those kind of methods and those kind of uh, slow approaches to combat, it's actually going to hurt you guys in the long run. And uh, Overwatch, the way you move in Overwatch and the way you move as a team is nothing like real-world combat, and those skills won't translate as much as I think you think they will and could hinder you guys in the long run. One of the biggest things, one of the absolute biggest things when it comes to winning in professional uh, sports is mental stamina and be able to... Being able to take and be able to not crack under pressure, and I think Oppenheimer. I mean, he had he was in one of the most pressure intense moments in American history, ladies and gentlemen, and he did not crack. And I think when you're on the stage, that is one of the most crucial things that's preached in esports is that you can hold up. your that you can hold your own. Um, sniping is actually a weakness. I feel like there's things called widow mains, and I think Chris Kyle would be a pretty quick on the widow main, and he's not going to want to switch. That We see that in Overwatch. It's a literal meme, and I think that's going to be Chris Kyle. He's going to go to widow, and he's not going to switch, and he's not going to hit a headshot, and he's going to be a liability to your team. Boom. Okay. All right, Josh. Um, so the way Jake explained it, though, it's who would win in an Overwatch 2v2? You don't have any... Preparation, you can't teach Robert Oppenheimer how to use a keyboard. Like, it's literally, we're in a battle, start. So, you, you mentioned your coaching point. I don't think you'll have enough time to actually coach during the game. I'll probably get a bunch of kills on you. 
I'm not even sure what the format is if it's like whoever kills the other two first, but I think uh, I, I think Chris, Kyle, and I would have a, an intuitive sense of what a video game is. He's probably played some FPSs in his life, and so even if it doesn't translate so well, he's 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 used a, a mouse before. Like Robert Oppenheimer, you're going to have to hide for two minutes just to tell him how a mouse works, right? So I I don't think uh, I, I think we'll be able to find you in time, and I I think we're both competent enough to to give a good fight. All right. So what I'm going to do now, since this is the last battle. Is I'm gonna do a little cage match round where basically there's no turns. You guys can just go at it, give your last thoughts, um, shout over the other person if you feel like that's gonna convince me. But go ahead and go, both of you. Yeah. I'll keep it civil, but I want to I want to uh, address something that you've mentioned. You again, you're just you're limiting one of the greatest geniuses of all time just by the era he was born in. That cannot be your only argument. You must have more than that. I, I, I am fully confident that one of the smartest men alive will be able to adapt and learn the game really quick. And I don't think I don't I don't think we should assume that we're limited with no time to prep. You know, I, I think we are gonna have a little I don't think we're just like spawning them in on a stage and then going at it. Plus I I also know what the formatting for professional Overwatch is and it's very long and I think that's gonna give him the time. It's like an average match is like two hours for professional Overwatch. I think that's gonna give us the time to I'll add context. Out. I'll add a little bit to help this conversation. Okay. You guys have one month. Oh, okay. Then yeah, like that, that's gonna give this this absolute genius plenty of time to adapt. So what what would you say to that? Do you have any other arguments besides that he was just born in the wrong era? So genius doesn't translate to video game performance. He he's a mathematician, he's a physicist, but that doesn't translate to oh, I have fast reaction times or oh, I can I can see this in my peripheral vision. Like Chris Kyle is specifically optimized for that. Like he and the whole thing with the pressure, like snipers are very patient and and they they have the psychology to wait for a kill and take chances. So they're, they are specifically neur neuronically, like, like their nervous system is optimized for like video game performance. Um, even though their hand like mo motions on their mouse but, but, isn't, doesn't translate to holding a gun, it's mm -hmm. it, the, the nervous system is trained for that. And Robert Oppenheimer okay. isn't. Here's, here's, what I, here's what I say. Uh, one, the, again, yes, yes, that's something I want to bring up. Snipers are patient. Overwatch is a game of speed, getting to the point as many times as possible. I think his patience in thinking that uh, translating his battle, uh, his previous sniping abilities to Overwatch is going to hinder him because it's, it, the game's going to be slow. You guys aren't going to take advantage of as many fights as you need to. And I don't think that's going to pay off in the long run. Also, I, there is a literal math course teaching at most, most colleges that teach math through video games, specifically League of Legends and Overwatch. I think gaming is about math, and math plays a huge part of that. And they, they teach these courses to professional Overwatch players. They teach Algebra 2 through video games and using numbers and abilities and all that stuff to translate. And I think all those skills are going to come... He already has the math knowledge. I think that's going to come crucial. He'll know exactly how much damage to, that needs to be done to be able to take out a hero on the dot. And he'll know that precisely. And I think math plays a huge part in being able to dominate in professional Overwatch. I, I don't think it's as important as landing headshots on Widowmaker. <laughs> because I, I get, if you want to bring the argument about Widowmaker, you you know what those Widow mains are. They sit there, they snipe, and they don't do anything. And that's a meme, man. I think I think Chris Kyle's going to get on Widowmaker and not switch and not want to switch because it's the sniper and end up not doing it. I could just tell him game. to play Anna. Like, just, just play Do we know Anna. he'll listen? Do we uh, know he'll listen? We don't know. We don't know. But also, I don't think he'll miss every shot with Widowmaker. And I think most headshots are a one-hit kill if you've got like one of those non-tank characters. So that's that's a huge advantage. Um, I can also position myself in such a way that you have to like enter his field of, of view, and he can position himself in a way where he can get the perfect field of view. He doesn't have any sort mm. of weak spots. He looks at his surroundings like he, he knows how to position mm. himself. So, because he's a sniper, he's literally yeah. built like that. So, yes, position is very key. Uh, that's a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. But I think the 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 the, 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 the 
the your approach to combat I think is subpar. I'm gonna be things I'm gonna be on heroes like if you're doing that, we're gonna be on Lucio and, and Wrecking Ball. Then what are you gonna do? We're too fast. There'll be no time for headshots and we're gonna be running into you and then he's gonna panic and not know what to do. Like we'll we'll play speed characters to, there, there's ways to combat that. And I think playing slow in Overwatch is is a hindrance and it's gonna hurt you in the long run and you're not gonna be able to do enough damage with the time given with each match. I think um I mean, the scope of Widowmaker is nothing like an actual. Right, wrap scope it up, guys. Home. And I think that uh, there's a there's a video of a man who 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 compares re real guns in the real world to guns in, in in video games, and he did one in Overwatch, and he said the scope of Widowmaker is nothing like an actual scope. So I think, I think that's gonna throw off your man, Chris Kyle. Hmm. Again, I mean, I don't think Oppenheimer has any sort of relevant experience. You're going to have to teach him how to play. He's going to learn how to use a keyboard in a month, but he doesn't have any video game knowledge. So I, that's going to help think, me out. But I, th but I think, but again, I said this earlier, I think Oppenheimer is going to have more fascination with the video game than Chris Kyle will. I think Chris Kyle is like your average hillbilly American-loving man who is just not going to really have that much. He's not going to like video games and stuff. That's not part of his foil. But this is going to be something Oppenheimer is going to love to want to understand and completely like wrap his mind around and he's going to have a more fascination and love for the game than Chris Kyle will ever have and passion wins games and we know that nice. he loves sniping that's his whole thing that's his entire like that's I feel like a video game where you get to sniping snipe people without big... killing people is huge sniping isn't sniping isn't a big deal in Overwatch though it's just not and it hasn't been for a very long time hmm. not in the current meta it, it, it's it's very it's very I mean when's the last time you saw Widowmaker on a professional stage you just don't see that and, and... all right that's all I have to say. That's all right, I, yeah, I'll, I'll stop it there. I, I don't know how to... Yeah, that's it. I feel like we said everything needs to be said. Okay, you guys have made this hard for me because <laughs> I am trying to picture this match of Paxton and Oppenheimer and everything he described just in this conversation and Josh and Chris Kyle and everything he described. Um, I do like you guys bringing up other videos, even the video of, of Josh mentioning a previous sniper, um, showing that like his knowledge of the game allowed him to play well in, I don't know if it was Call of Duty or what it was. That's a grandpa. That's a grandpa. Yeah. A grandpa? Oh, okay. I know Just, the guy. He's, he's, he's a vibe. He's really cool. 70 okay. years okay. old, like crazy. I, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> that is um, cool. I did, I did enjoy Paxton's rebuttaling against the fact that the battlefield in a video game is different. So this is a different landscape. I actually do like Josh's point that Chris Kyle has probably played video games before because I feel like that is going to play a role in just it's not going to be as much of a shock. And he's going to be able to at least adapt faster than Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. um, given time, Oppenheimer might have an edge because of... And I appreciated kind of even just like his intensity and even the fact that he would be fascinated about this uh, and he would be intently focused on it. I'm a little torn because I kind of want to do something here. Uh -oh. I kind of want to not make the final decision on who wins. I kind of oh. want people who view it to comment on who won that last fight. And then we will announce maybe on a short... Uh, YouTube short or something like that. Who the who the winner is, but I am willing. I am willing to call it right now. If you guys, if you guys need a victor, but I might. It might be fun to have other people choose who won this contest. I now do, they can I, still comment regardless. I do like, I do like the the idea. I think. Yeah. I, I think there's a better way to implement. It. I don't think we have a big enough fan base to. No, I mean it's just going to be our friends. It. We don't yeah. have a fan base at all. Um, <laughs> it's I, just I, our I, friends. I kind of like the idea of a victor now, um, but I, I, you know, I'm okay with it. We'll choose. Way. You know what? We'll choose a victor now, but then there can be a victor of the people. Victor of the, the people. people which is award. The people. Yeah, <laughs> which which is a, a award in of itself, an accolade, and then people yeah. can clown on me for you know if I chose wrong, then you can put that in, and I'll take an L for that. Yeah. Uh, and and you can comment on the other contests as well, and then also comment on whether or not. You like this type of format and this type of I content. thought it was really fun. I it's like again, unique. I went into this <laughs> I weird. went into this knowing nothing and I had mm -hmm. a blast. Just just being able to uh formulate arguments without any time is, is it's fun so to fun. think on your feet. It's yeah, fun it's to so think on your feet. Well said. No hard feelings, Josh. Put it there before we even know the victor. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's the wrong side for me, but <laughs> shake it. There we go. What is happening? Okay. <laughs> that was All a right. handshake. That was a handshake. All right. Um for this competition. 
the grand winner, the final winner. I'm just choosing with my gut here because that one I really, really, really had a hard time figuring out. Uh, I am choosing Paxton and Oppenheimer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Me Jake? and the nuke builder. I know. I know. People might get mad at me for that. Me and the nuke. I would say. I, 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 just... I. Okay. So one of the thoughts was I don't. I don't know if Chris Kyle has played any video games, and I don't think you knew either. You said he probably did. But it was more of Paxton attacking the fact that it was me weighing the conversion between video games and actual real life uh, battle yeah. and strategy versus your you kind of saying that he would have an upper hand in that he's probably played video games before. But that was like a probably. That Can was. Just, let me say one thing real quick. Yeah. I think I think what I tried to do in that argument was actually list specific psychological advantages like reaction time and peripheral vision. I think those two are like. Yes, you did. Obviously, yes. like translatable. So. Right. Uh, you should consider that. But it's too late. Yeah, it's, it's too, too late. late. It's, it's too, too late. late. Bless me. Yeah. I I think I don't know. I I liked all your arguments except that your like one of your driving arguments was just like limiting my guy by his era like that that was a big and i just thought that was a little cheap i don't know i didn't like that it was cheap much. but it was like man aristotle is not going to be able to play and he was kind of smart yeah like you know that's true that's true but it's like you got to work with the character you're given and that's kind of out of outside of my control but... yeah 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 we'll see it, it, it was, was, it was really I, that one was like dead even for me to be honest i really didn't know how to pick at the end i thought i thought going into it that i was like huh paxton has more overwatch knowledge so he might have better arguments but I did think Chris Kyle would have a leg up on Oppenheimer in general. Yeah. Um, that if you, if the argument was Chris Kyle versus Oppenheimer and you guys got to coach them, I probably would choose Chris Kyle. Um, so I was kind of like, hmm, I'm giving Paxton slightly an edge to start with because he is the better Overwatch player. And that is kind of hard. That might seem kind of unfair. But I also gave Josh slightly an edge in the music one because he is a better musician. So I was hoping the, you would weigh that still. In the <laughs> end, it does kind of balance out. No, I did. I tried to think about who would actually win the contest if mm. it was a 2v2. And I think Paxton definitely would carry. I think Oppenheimer would get crushed. But I think Paxton's also ability to be able to coach him and to be able and Oppenheimer's ability to kind of listen and just be like, hey, this is what I want you to do because I know you're not going to be as good. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that that could, that could play out and Paxton would be able to see what could Oppenheimer do, how fast does he get coming along? And that all goes into his coaching abilities. Um, so yeah, I kind of think going into that round, it was a little heavily weighted towards Paxton, but so was one of the previous rounds with the music. So that was fun. I really enjoyed it. Okay. That. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> Uh, but people can comment down below. Um, we would you love can, that. We would love you that. You can also uh, let us know if I took an L by <laughs> who I chose as the victor in each contest. Uh, we would love to hear. Uh, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Yep.